Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. For this week's video, I want to show you my tips on how you can create a dynamic sky using On One Photo Raw 2018. So I'm going to start in the Browse module, and this is basically just where I'm going to find the photo that I want to edit. So I'm going to scroll down to that photo real quick, and once I've found the one that I want to edit, I'm going to click on it. And there's a few ways that you can create a nice sky for your photo, and you can do it inside of effects, or you can do it inside of layers. For this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do it inside of layers. So we're just gonna select our photo here, and we're just gonna head into layers. So now that we're inside of layers, this is where we're going to add different elements onto our photo so that we can really create a nice dynamic sky with our photo here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into my extra section, and I'm going to head into On One Extras. I'm going to go into Backgrounds. I'm going to go into Skies. And I'm just going to find a sky that I want to add onto my photo. There's a bunch of skies to choose from. Once you've found the one that you want, you can either double click it to add it onto your photo as a layer, or you can simply drag it over. It'll ask you if you want to add it as a new photo or open it as a new layer. Add as a layer. And it will add that layer onto your photo here. And the first thing I like to do whenever I'm adding a sky onto another photo is I'll head over to its opacity and I'll lower that layer's opacity. And then I'll head to my move tool here. And then I can situate it onto the other photo how I want it. And I can see through the photo so I can see where I'm actually adding that layer on top of. And I'll just stretch it out a little bit so that it covers the entire photo here. And I'm just trying to sort of match this horizon line with this horizon line down here. And so once we have it kind of matched up, I'll just take the opacity back to 100. And then I'll take this layer, the actual photo layer that we're actually editing, and I'll put that above my sky layer. And now we're going to brush out parts of this sky here so that we can reveal the bottom layer sky onto our photo. So to do that, we're just going to head over to our masking brush here. You can click on it, or you can hit B on your keyboard. I'm going to head up to my masking options, and I'm going to make sure that I have my perfect brush selected. And the reason I want to select the perfect brush is because I want to separate these color tones on the reflection so that I maintain a little bit of that reflection when I do mask out this area. I'm going to head up and make sure I have paint out selected so that I'm removing this area of sky from my photo. And then I'm just gonna lower the opacity quite a bit, probably about 35-ish, so that it really blends well with the photo. And now I can just start painting out this area from my window. So you'll see already that it's actually looking pretty good up here, especially with that reflection staying on there. We have a nice little dynamic sky that we're adding onto our photo. And there's actually a reason I left part of this off down here, and the reason that I sort of went over the lines with the brushing is because I'm going to go back and make sure my brush is set to paint in. So I'm gonna do Shift X on my keyboard, so that it turns it to paint in. And now I'm gonna turn off my perfect brush, and I'm going to increase the feather to 100, and now I'm just gonna stay down here, right below that line, and I'm just gonna brush it in so that it blends with the original photo. So there we go, that looks a lot better as far as the blending goes for our two skies. And I see that I went a little overboard when I was masking out this photo and a little bit of the sky came creeping up. So what I can do to keep this line straight here is I can go to my masking line tool and I can just drop a point on the line here and just keep making one all the way up. And I'm going to make sure the mode is set to add so that I can add that area back in. And I can just click on it, and you'll see that it removed all of those sky areas instantly. So now that we have our sky masked the way we want it, the next thing I want to do is I want to crop my photo a little bit 
so that I can remove some of this area over here and these windows. So I'm just going to head over to my crop tool here. I'm actually going to go up to a preset 4x5 setting. I'm just going to move this over so that I sort of remove this window area from my photo. Once I have it the way I want it, I'm just going to hit enter. Now I have my photo cropped. I'm just going to hit V on my keyboard to remove the crop lines on my photo. And I want to add actually one more element into my shot here. And so I'm going to go back into my extras pane. And I'm going to go back and back until I see my extras and on one extras. And if you want to access any extras inside of on one photo raw, simply head up to file, manage extras. And if you go into backgrounds, this is where you can add different backgrounds and different things you want to add as part of elements onto your photos. And it's really easy to do so. Just go into import and grab a photo and you can create categories or add different things into categories that are already made. And once you've added those, you can head into my extras and now you'll have those photos to add onto your shot. So I'm actually just going to go into my birds folder here and I'm going to drag some birds onto my photo. I'm going to add them as a layer. And you'll see that there's a white background around them even though they're a PNG. An easy way to fix that is just grab your masking brush tool. Make sure that you have your perfect brush selected and it's set to paint out. And now just brush out the white from around your PNG files. And you'll notice there's still a little bit of white around them. So you can just grab your chisel tool here and you can just brush that little white that you have off of the birds. And so I'm just going to hit V on my keyboard and I'm going to move them up into the sky area a little bit. I'm actually just going to make them a little bit smaller here. Just like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to their opacity and I'm going to pull it back to about, I don't know, 55. Something that it looks like we're looking at these birds through a window. So that looks about realistic to me. So now that we have our photo all composited together, now what we want to do is we want to hit save. Since we hit save on our photo, it saved our photo as a PSD file and it's maintained the layers. So now what we can do is we can go back into browse. We'll save and close. And now that you're in browse, in the same folder that you have your master file, scroll all the way down and you can find the PSD file that you just created. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head into develop. And the first thing I want to do as far as editing this photo goes is I just want to pull back on the exposure a little bit. Just a little bit, just to bring a little bit of life into the replaced sky that we have. And then I'm just going to pull up on the shadows a tad. And then the contrast. So now that we have a little bit of a tonality set for our shot, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a local adjustment just so that we can sort of subdue this area down here on our helicopter and in the water. So I'm just going to make sure it's set to darken. I'm going to head over to my adjustable gradient here, drop it down on my photo, flip it around, just set it right there. And then I'm going to play with the opacity a little bit just so that I can blend it a little bit more with our shot. So there we go. Now if we turn that on and off, you'll see it does a really good job of sort of just subduing this area on our shot. So the last thing I want to do is I just want to head into effects to add a couple creative filters. I'm just going to go into overall settings here. I'm going to add a filter. And the first filter I want to add is I want to add sunshine. And sunshine is a nice filter for this photo because it's going to brighten up this area in our sky and then tone down these areas on the land here. So now that we have a nice look for our photo with the sunshine, the next filter I want to add is I want to add a split toning filter. And the reason I want to add a split toning filter is because I want to warm this photo up a little bit. There's sort of a blue cast on the water and in the sky here. So I'm actually just going to hit warm. And you'll see that it warmed our photo up quite a bit and added a nice unique style. And there's one more filter I want to add onto my photo here. And I'm going to add LUTs. And the reason I like to add LUTs onto shots like these is because LUTs pack a huge punch of style all in one filter. And so I'll go into my categories and I'll go into these cinematic color grading LUTs. 
And if you wanna download these, I'll include the link in the description to this video and you can head to our site. There's a bunch of other free LUTs you can download as well. I know I wanna pick one that I made called Punch Bowl. And so you'll see if I turn this on and off that it really packs a ton of style all in one filter. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, you'll see that we really turn this photo into something special, all while replacing this guy, adding some birds into it, and adding a couple filters on top of it. So those are a few of my tips on how to create dynamic skies using On One Photo Raw 2018. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for next week's tip of the week.